Um, where did this go? This is the obvious question you should be asking. What I'm saying is by 1965, it was clear that we get fat because of the carbs of our diet. It should have been like one of these great medical breakthrough accomplishments. You know, for 150 years, everybody thought carbohydrates were fattening. Some new technologies come along. Medical researchers do the work, and they demonstrate why they're fattening. Nobel Prize is for all. Instead, it vanishes. So one reason it vanishes is this. We came to believe, by 1960s, obesity was a deceiving eating disorder. It was being, um, the whole obesity research field was dominated by psychologists and psychiatrists. It still is. Social workers, you know, try to get you to change the way you eat. But if you go to a biochemistry textbook and you look up, remember I said adipocyte is a technical term for a fat cell? Look up adipocyte in Leninger's Principles of Biochemistry. This is the one, you know, the best biochemistry textbook in America. And basically what you're looking for is what makes a fat cell fat. And it'll say this, high blood glucose elicits a release of insulin, which speeds the uptake of glucose by tissues and favors the storage of fuels as glycogen. I'm going to translate, don't worry. And triglycerols while inhibiting fatty acid mobilization. High blood glucose means high blood sugar. You get high blood sugar by eating carbohydrate-rich foods, which dump their glucose into the bloodstream, and blood sugar starts to go up. And that's why you secrete insulin, to try and control that. So um, that re elicits a release of insulin, which speeds the uptake of glucose by tissues and favors the storage of fuels. as glycogen, which is the form we store carbohydrates, and triglycerol is the form. So High carb-rich meals basically, through their effect on insulin, make fat cells fat, and then you look at what makes people fat, and it says to a first approximation, obesity is a result of taking in more calories in the diet than are expended by the body's energy consuming. So the mechanism for what makes fat cells fat is entirely different than the mechanism for what makes people fat, which is crazy, because our fat cells are part of us. We're fat because our fat cells are fat. And I literally had this conversation, this guy Keith Frayne, whose textbook I showed you, Oxford University professor, I still write articles for the journal Science, I was interviewing Keith for one of these articles, and he explained to me why, you know, all the different ways that insulin makes fat cells fat, and then he got into this idea that we get fat, humans get fat because we overeat, and I said, Keith, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. You just spent 20 minutes explaining how insulin makes fat cells fat, and then you got to us, humans, and you changed the mechanism to this overeating thing. What's going on there? And he literally said to me, you know, I never thought of that. It's just none of us think of that. I mean, I never thought of it until I actually was reading, going through the research, and luckily there was a very smart guy named Pennington in 1947 who did think of it. Um, we came to believe in the 1960s that dietary fat caused heart disease, okay? So if dietary fat causes heart disease, what you want to eat is low-fat diets. And a low-fat diet is a high-carbohydrate diet because you replace the fat with carbs. And a, a low-carbohydrate diet, like if you remove the carbs from your diet because you think carbs are fattening and you don't want to restrict the calories you eat because this isn't about how much you eat or exercise. It's about getting rid of the foods that make you fat. And in fact, if you're overweight or obese, if your body's big, you need a lot of energy to run it. So if you want to restrict carbs but not cut calories, you replace the carbs with fat. So a low-carb diet is a high-fat diet. So what happens is these two other paradigms clashed in the 1960s. The idea that fat caused heart disease, a brand new idea with no evidence to support it, clashed with the 150-year-old conventional wisdom that carbohydrates make us fat. And the new idea won, in part because Harvard nutritionists didn't like it. Um, this is the New York Times. Remember I told you, 1965, American Physiology Society published an 800-page handbook of adipose tissue metabolism, carbohydrates driving insulin, driving fat. 1965, the New York Times runs an article, New Diet Decried by Nutritionists. Dangers are seen in low-carbohydrate intake. Some of the nation's top nutrition experts are concerned by the new popularity of the low-carbohydrate-reducing diet which one of them calls nonsense, and another, this fellow Jean Maillard from Harvard, compares to mass murder, okay? We now know that carbohydrates make you fat. The diets are popular, huh? Because if you people don't eat the carbs, they're not, they don't get fat, and they lose weight. But the, the nutritionists think they're nonsense because you're telling the fat person he could eat as much as he wants, okay? And we all know that people get fat because they eat too much. So any diet that says you can eat as much as you want has to be nonsense, and it's mass murder because you're telling them they could eat a lot of fat. 
The problem is we never got around to actually proving that this idea that fat causes heart disease was true. But in the meanwhile, we just kept pushing carbs on everyone. So by 1980, or whenever this was, in the 80s, you get the food guide pyramid. Bread, cereal, rice, and pasta, all the things that Dr. Spock was telling us make us fat, are now the things we're supposed to eat all the time. And sugar gets a free pass, even though it's at the top of the food guide pyramid, because sugar is a low-fat substance. <laughs> so by 1995, I have the American Heart Association is telling us that in order to lower the amount of fat in your diet, to control, this is a quote, um, to control the amount and kind of fat, saturated fatty acids, and dietary cholesterol you eat, choose snacks from other food groups, such as low-fat cookies, low-fat crackers, unsalted pretzels, hard candy, gumdrops, sugar. Okay? They are so concerned, that, and sugar, which is half glucose and half fructose, and I'm not going to get into it, is probably the single worst offender. It's conceivable that if we didn't have sugar in our diet, it would be impossible to get obese. Okay, so the first thing that everyone should get rid of is sugar. Um, last thing, and then I'll answer any questions, sign books, call my wife and apologize. Um, <laughs> why were those populations fat? Remember we asked that question? Okay, poor populations eat carb-rich diets. That's what they do. And this is Rolf Richards at University of Jamaica, a diabetes specialist, University of the West Indies. He said, most third world countries have a high carbohydrate intake is their economic dependence is predominantly agricultural with a heavy dependence on non-dairy produces. It is conceivable that the ready availability of starch in preference to animal protein, contributing as it is must the main caloric requirements, leads to increased lipogenesis, that's fat formation, and the development of obesity. We get fat to begin with because we eat carbohydrates. They keep us fat, and when we try not to eat them, our medical our doctors or public health authorities tell us we're killing ourselves. And then they prescribe statins and blood pressure lowering medication. So everybody's happy, except us. Um, thank you for your patience. I realize this is you know, probably not what you expected. Yes. And you'll have to speak up because I'm deaf and because I don't eat enough carbs. <laughs> What's going on? It's simple. Repeat the question. Okay, the question is if these obese populations eat all these carbs, how do we explain the obese mothers with the starving kids? Okay, and here's my theory. And I could, someday I would like to convince the medical establishment to test it. Whenever I give these lectures, I'm hoping there's somebody in the audience who like owns a biotech company or Microsoft or something and is gonna offer up the money to test it. Um, you squeak carbs, you start driving insulin into your fat cells, okay? As you, I mean, you start driving calories into your fat cells. So now you have to compensate. Remember, like the animals, you've got to either eat more or exercise less. Eat more or expend less calories, okay? But the problem is, in a poor population, you can't eat more calories because there are no more calories. So you just expend less. And every year that goes by, as you get fatter, you expend less and less. And while you're it's until the point where you can get fat on an amount, remember Jean Mayer's quote, these animals will get fat even when half starved. Eventually, you will have humans who can get fat even when half starved. Their children are half starved, and the adults are indeed half starved, but still fat. So that's what I'm saying happens because energy, and the same thing happens even if you don't live in a poor society. But what do you start to do when you start getting fatter, right? You start to eat less, which doesn't solve the problem. But you say, okay, I'm getting fatter. I better cut down on the amount of calories. So you do what Mehmet Oz asks. You eat 100 calories less a day or 300. But it doesn't stop the calories from being driven into your fat tissue because you're still eating the carbs, which are making you secrete the insulin. Well, all it does is remove 300 calories from the energy you could expend every day. So you lose the impulse to be sedentary, to be physically active. You don't want to run marathons or go running with your lean friends because you're starving yourself. 
And it's not having any effect on how much fat you're accumulating because the fat, like Julius Bauer says, it's got its own agenda. It doesn't care how much you eat. It's going to take what it needs anyway. So the same thing happens in our body. Just by going on a diet, you basically, you don't change the amount of fat you accumulate. You might for a short time, but basically you just lower the amount of energy your body has to expend. Yes? I read uh, the good calories, bad calories, and one of the things I remember you saying was that um, some people do lose weight by um, lowering their calories, not as, not as well, but one of the things say is they don't stay on that regime and so they'll gain the weight back. Well, this is, you know, people lose weight. The question was, you know, some people lose weight on every diet. We all know people went on Weight Watchers and lost weight, and the people on the biggest loser, God knows, they lose like 300 pounds. So what's going on? You know, they're not, but the point is, every diet, in effect, and it's how I could go through the numbers. I don't have them on a slide, and I'm going to have to get them on a slide. But if you try to cut calories significantly, if you try to cut more than 100 calories or 200 calories a day, actually, I'll give you an example. I could work. Let's say you're eating 2,500 calories a day, and you decide you're going to go on a low-fat diet and cut calories. So you cut your fat. Maybe you're eating 35% of calories. That's what health-conscious Americans eat. Now you cut it to 30%. So you've changed your fat consumption by 5%. You are eating 5% of 2,500 is 125 calories a day less of fat, which isn't a lot. So if you want to cut 500 calories, you don't want to touch protein, right, because protein is sacred. The other 375 calories will come from carbohydrates. So a low-fat, low-calorie diet will be a carbohydrate-restricted diet. Moreover, you'll change the quality of the carbs. One of the things, you know, I actually forget to say this when I'm lecturing, but what I'm saying is carbohydrates are literally fattening, but some are more fattening than others. So the more carbs in the food, the denser the digestible carbs, the easier they are to digest, the quicker we digest them. This is a concept that nutritionists refer to as the glycemic index. The higher the glycemic index, the more fattening they are. Potato is more fattening than broccoli. Because potato has more carbs, it's like 20% carbs, and broccoli is like 5% carbs. The rest of broccoli is fiber that you don't digest in water. So the more carbs, the more fattening it is. Um, when you go on a diet to, in this day and age, what you do is you improve the quality of the carbs you eat. And so now they'll say eat whole grains and greens. Nobody pushes white rice on you anymore when you're dieting. They used to, or pasta when you're dieting. So they, they you not only do you lower the amount of carbs you eat, you improve the, quantity, the quality, and most important, you get rid of the sugars. Remember I said sugar's probably the worst. So you stop eating desserts and sweets, and you might think of like, I'm not going to eat the Snickers bars because it's got a lot of fat, and it's 300 calories, but it's also got a lot of sugar, so you're getting rid of the sugar. If you give up Coca-Cola and Pepsi and drink Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi, you're getting rid of the sugar there. If you give up beer, entirely or switch to light beer, you're getting rid of the maltose, which is a kind of sugar. If you, you know, so there's a lot of ways in which you think that you're cutting calories, but you're actually cutting carb calories and sugar calories. So you're improving. The problem on these diets is that you're still trying to starve yourself. 